Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I get a lot of compliments and complaints about the computers that I have here behind me. These are a couple of old Apple computers, a Mac and an Apple IIgs, and both of these computers I have been controlling with this Kensington trackball. This is their Turbo Mouse ADB that I bought back in like 1988 or so. It still works, it's built like a tank. And the other day, I got in their latest iteration of their trackball. This is the new Slim Blade Pro trackball. And although it retains many of the properties you've come to expect in a trackball, this, of course, is modernized for the 21st century. This one has a USB Type-C connector, but it can also work wirelessly over Bluetooth or via its little dongle here on the bottom. Instead of using rollers to track movement, it has optical sensors, and there's a bunch of neat features that they've built into this trackball, and we're going to explore all of that here in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Kensington. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And I should also mention I do produce videos for Kensington from time to time about how to use their products, and those usually appear on Amazon product pages. But again, this one is completely my opinion. So let's get into it now and see what this trackball is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $120. Incidentally, the old mouse behind me back in 1988 also cost about $120, bucks, but adjusted for inflation, it was more like $246 in today's money. So things do get less expensive and more functional here in the future. Now, the version we're looking at in this video is the Wireless Pro Edition. There is also a wired version that needs to be plugged into the computer directly. They largely have the same feature set, but the Pro Edition here has a sensitivity button here on the side, which we'll demo in a few minutes, that is lacking on the wired version, but otherwise they are pretty much the same product. Now, like its predecessor, this one has a nice big heavy mouse ball, about 55 millimeters, that comes out very easy for cleaning. You've got four buttons on the mouse. Your left and right mouse buttons are right here. And the way you use this is just use your finger here to navigate and your thumb to push the buttons, or your pinky could even operate the right mouse button. And if you're someone who struggles with a traditional mouse, these trackballs can often be a lot more comfortable from an ergonomic standpoint. And I found the buttons on this to be quite large. You can click all the way down here or all the way up here. So wherever it's comfortable, you should be able to get your clicks registered. And the same is true of the right mouse button over here. Now, this button on the upper left-hand corner right now is configured as a middle mouse button. So if you have a traditional mouse that has one of those scroll wheels, typically you can push that scroll wheel down to register a middle click. That same functionality is replicated here when you push this button. And this button on the other side is mapped as a back button. So on your web browser, you could push this quickly to go back a page as you're browsing around. But all of the buttons here can be configured with the Kensington software, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Now on the side here, you've got a switch to determine its operating mode. So when you have it flicked all the way up to the top here, it will look for the wireless dongle that you can take out here and put in your computer. When you have it in the middle position, the wireless is off, but if you plug it in over a USB Type-C cable, which is included to your computer, it will work like a standard wired mouse. And then when you have it flicked all the way down to the bottom position, it will activate Bluetooth mode. So you could have the dongle on your desktop computer and then bring this with you and have it work in Bluetooth mode for your laptop, for example. So you have three different ways you can connect it. Now, if you do decide to connect the mouse up to your computer with the dongle here, it will encrypt the communication as it will do with Bluetooth as well. So you won't have your mouse movements going out in the clear. And then on the right hand side, you have a DPI button. There's actually four different settings here, a 400, an 800, a 1200, and a 1600. And each position will make the mouse more sensitive. And every time you push it, it will blink to indicate what level it's at. So you just saw three blinks there. That indicates it's at 1,200. And then if I hit it again, it will give me four blinks for 1,600. And just to give you a sense of the scale here, if we go to my 
two up view. Right now we've got it on the 1600 setting here. And as you can see, I don't have to move much here to get the mouse to move pretty far across the screen. And if I push this again to go back to the 400 DPI mode, you can see I have to move the mouse a lot more to have the pointer move uh, on screen. So you can adjust the level of uh, resolution, if you will, of the mouse uh, with that button push. And this is all without having to install any software. All of these functions will work out of the gate. Now, modern pointing devices all have some way to scroll what's on screen, and this one is no exception. So if you twist the mouse ball here, it will scroll whatever is on screen, which I thought was really clever. And then, of course, if you just start moving the ball around, the mouse pointer will track as usual. And when you twist this, the mouse will make a little clicking sound as you do it, so you know that you are in a scroll uh, procedure here versus a pointing one. But of course, once you start pointing again, that click goes away. I could not find a way to turn off the click, but it's not very loud, and I actually like it because the click corresponds with each little notch of scrolling that the trackball does here. And again, this will work without any drivers or software installed, but there is some software to customize it. Let's take a look at that. So this is the Kensington Works software, and you've got a lot of configuration options in here. We're gonna start on the button screen, and as you can see, I can go in and configure what each of these buttons do. Additionally, I can have it do something when I push two buttons together at the same time. So for example, if I have the left and right mouse button pushed simultaneously, I can have it do any number of things that you see here on screen, including maybe have it mute and unmute my Zoom call, for example. And of course, you've got a bunch of other things that you can have it do based on that button push. And you could even do things like reverse the left and right click. If you wanted to uh, have that be something you want to do, you can go over here to left click and configure that to work differently. So a lot of different options here that you can do. Now there's some additional settings that you can apply here to the mouse as well. So if we jump down into the pointer section here, uh, we can adjust the default speed of the pointer. They have another option here where you can set a custom speed when you hold down a key. So for example, I could set this to go a little faster when I hold down the Alt key and then when I lift the key, it slows back down to the normal speed. If I go here to movement, this one's pretty cool. I have it now set to the single access movement based on an Alt key press. And right now, as I move the mouse in circles here, you can move any direction you want. But if I hold the Alt key down, the mouse will move in a straight line left or right, so it won't go off track if I wanted to draw a straight line, for example. It will also do the same in the up and down movement here based on how I move the mouse. I'll give you another look at that here so you can get a feel for it. So if I hold down the Alt key, left and right, or up and down, but as you can see, it holds into that track until I very specifically move it in an upward or downward direction. So if you often have a hard time getting a straight line to draw with a mouse, this might be a great way to do that. You can also adjust the scroll speed here in addition to the scroll orientation. And another neat thing is that you can apply settings based on specific applications. So in Windows, if you have Microsoft Word loaded up, you can have different things attached to different buttons based on that application and then have different settings for another one. So a lot of depth to this here. And in many ways, this reminds me of some of the gaming mice we look at from a configuration standpoint. Uh, one thing I wanted to note is that it looks like it might be wobbling a little bit here. This is due to my IKEA desk that I've been using for many years now. It's getting a bit warped on some of my nicer furniture. It is uh, completely flat and doesn't wobble around at all. Now, it is very shiny, and so it does pick up grease and fingerprints, so I think you will be wiping this down quite a bit, but that's really the only gripe that I have with it. Kensington says the battery life out of this is about four months, depending on usage. I would agree with that based on my limited time with the device here. Uh, you do have to plug it in over USB Type-C every once in a while to charge it, but I think you should get a good amount of battery life out of this on par with their other wireless products that they have been making for quite a long time. And all in, I think this is an excellent trackball. I haven't looked at a trackball in many years, but it's nice to see them continuing to come up with new ways to make these mice work with modern PCs. And I'm really uh, happy with the scroll function here. It works really well, and I think a really clever way to 
add that functionality into something that really hasn't changed all that much from a functional standpoint in decades. And of course, Kensington has been making these things for decades, and I think it will do very well on your modern PC too. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.